hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is adeze if you're new to this channel you're welcome and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for always clicking on my videos you guys are the best and if you're a returning watcher you know you always watch my videos youtube always shows you my videos you always click you always watch but you don't subscribe why are you doing this to me <laughs> why <laughs> please subscribe to my channel please like my videos and you know share and leave a comment and all that and all that okay anyway you guys in today's video you guys i don't have makeup on no, so this is my real face okay and my eyes might disappear while i'm talking so just take it like that that is how god made me <laughs> especially when i'm laughing my eyes will disappear so anyway today's video is going to be a story time and it's basically me telling you guys two basic stories about how or what my father did to me that really shaped the way i see myself helps build my confidence and all that and all that okay so this is basically to encourage fathers out there don't neglect your daughters don't think that raising daughters is is left for mothers okay basically parents don't think that raising sons or raising daughters is less for the mother or the father okay both of you together have a role to play in a child's life okay two heads are always better than one actually two good heads are always better than one okay so don't leave off don't say oh my wife is better at this so let me leave my child completely for my wife because there are also things that you can contribute to that child's life you know by actively being there for your child okay so if you'd like to hear these very interesting stories then just keep on watching so guys the first story starts when i was a very little child i was about let's say five years plus or six i was about to enter primary one and we just moved to abuja because we lived in lagos before then so we moved to abuja and i was about to enter a new school which was handmade international nursery and primary school that was called handmade before i don't know the name right now but yeah in gariki um that was the school i was about to enter okay so i went to the school my father took me to the school and he took me to go and write an exam okay so he took me for the exam i think it's entry level exam anybody who wants to enter primary one in a new school basically is an exam that you write so he took me to go and write that exam he was there you know throughout the exam then afterwards he took me back home okay now when the results for the exam came out my name was not on the list okay my name wasn't on the list but there was a name there adeze eze okay i don't know if you're the one sorry but <laughs> i have to mention the name so that you guys will understand what really happened okay so the name on the list was adeze eze okay and that's not my name my name is adeze but, but eze is not my son's name so my father said no there's no way his daughter's name will not be on this list because number one that day he remembers clearly that they called adeze eze and she wasn't around for the exam and i'm sure the reason why he remembers it clearly is because we both share the same first name so i'm sure when they called adeze he would think it's his child and when they now call the son name he'll realize it's not his child okay but he now remembered that, that the girl did not come for the exam and my father said there is no way that me i will fail that exam you know <laughs> so, so he said there's no way that i'll fail that exam that he needs them to check the script or whatever but he knows that his child passed that exam okay and lo, lo and behold thankfully because my mom was even saying that if she was the one and she didn't see my, my name on the list she would just get emotional and carry her, her child and be going to her house you know that kind of thing now eh, people don't want to uh, 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 admit my child let me be going but my father said no that there is no way that i will not pass that exam you guys i was a child though the reason why i remember this story very well is because of you know all these things that happened and it's a story that they always tell in my in my house okay so my father told them that they should go and check that was how they checked the next thing they realized that i actually passed this exam so corruption used to it started from tete since it's not today <laughs> we don't know what happened i don't well the theory is that it might be an error but that kind of error mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. anyway the niger we did so anyway that was how um the girl's name was removed from the list and i was you know giving admission into the school okay so that was the first incident i remember them my father was always saying it, that there's no way his child will not pass it. they tell the story all the time like there's no way he, he knows his daughter is going to pass that exam so fast forward i didn't know that was actually a primo a, a foreshadowing of what was going to happen in the future now fast forward to after secondary school um the first i wrote jam the first time i actually put unn i wanted to study law in unn okay then i said i would come and write post UME exam we went there we wrote the post UME exam 
and for some reason they said that uh, whether I didn't get the cut off mark but I have to come and pay some money this that this that I just told my parents I see first of all I didn't like the school when I went there I'm sorry so I'm sorry to anybody that attended you and then I didn't like the school when I went there I was just like <laughs> I don't want to stay in this school you know so we just didn't pursue that any further I decided to now apply to University of Ibadan and I now applied to read to study English because then University of Ibadan did not have law in their curriculum so I think they had law, but the law was, um, what they call that thing now? Dis discredited, not discredited, or well, it wasn't accredited, I can't remember. But I know that they were not offering law um, as a course when I was, when I wrote, when I applied to the school, when I wanted to write, enter the school, whatever, anyway. So I applied to study English, okay? Now, that year, I got 282 in JAMP. You guys, are you listening? I scored 282 in JAMP, that's number one. Number two was that um, they were not doing post UME, they were doing physical interviews, okay? So what you do is that you submit your WIAC results. My WIAC results was very good. I didn't have any Ds or F. I had mostly A, I had mostly Bs and Cs, okay? So I didn't um, write any post UME exam. We had physical interviews. So when you submit your WIAC result and your JAM result and some other documents they requested, they will now shortlist people that will come for the interview, okay? So I was shortlisted and I went for the interview. I remember the questions they asked me clearly. I knew I answered the questions well and, you know, everything went on smoothly and I went home. Now, instead of them to give us admission that year, they said that uh, because they had strike one time and this and that, they had a six-month strike before we entered or something like that, they now had to readjust their calendar so that um i don't know what they were doing but they adjusted their calendar so we did not enter ui that year like they didn't even release any results or, or shortlist anybody you know that year so i had to wait and for me personally i believe that i was going to get the admission because i mean of my jump score and my interview and my work result like everything was just on point so i believe i was going to get the admission you know whenever they were ready so we decided that there's no point in me writing jam but you know those things i should just wait for the school <laughs> to give me admission so i waited like two years at home and you guys know that waiting at home after you've written a uh, wayek is almost like torture like one <laughs> now looking back i'm just laughing at myself because it wasn't so much an advantage entering school before me or graduating before me or anything but at that time <laughs> you can't tell me nothing First of all, my mates were already like in 200 level, so I was already burnt at home. So I just couldn't wait to leave the house and enter uni, okay? So, um, yeah, so that was how, you know, that whole period was trying. Well, it wasn't really trying, child, but let's just say that that whole period, you know how it's frustrating to be at home. You now hear your friends are in school. Some of them will come back for holidays and be just seeing you about your university life. Some of them will even cut you off because you have not yet entered school. They, you are not on their level anymore, okay? So that was how it was for me then. And I just couldn't wait for when UI will finally, you know, release the results and I will just start school. So finally, they now sent us messages or so. I can't remember how we I found out, but I know that, yes, they said that they have shortlisted students that have got, that got admission that year. So you take your, I think your jam registration number and so another number, whatever. Then you go to their portal, like to know whether you, you got an admission or not, okay? Then you print out something and come to the school and submit. You know how do those things go now? So me, I carried myself that day excited. I ran to the cyber cafe. I logged in into the portal, put in the details that were requested and press enter. And the next thing I saw is, um, sorry, you were not offered admission this year. Try again next year. I say, huh? Like, <laughs> you know when you are reading something, but you are, your eyes are not seeing what is written there. I said, what? I tried the whole thing again, putting on my details, blah, 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 blah. Press enter. Next thing I saw is, sorry, no admission. I said, oh, God of, of mercy. Chineke <laughs> na. I was... Eh? I was like, what? What do you put me? Like, after I've stayed at home two whole freaking years, and that year I didn't write jam. So it's not like I'll say, oh, there was a way the whole time it was. So it wasn't like I'll just say, oh, I can just forget about you. I let me just go and try another school. No, like I didn't have any other option. I was busy having faith and waiting for UI. I now put my details again the third time, and it gave me the same answer. Ha! I quickly just left the cyber cafe. I left my time running, everything. I just left. People were even calling me, ah, what, what happened? Whatever. I just walked straight like a zombie. <laughs> I walked straight. I just took a bike. I remember the bike man asking me, are you okay or something? I, I don't know what was happening. I just 
entered the bike like this. When I got to the house, he asked me how much. I think I gave him, maybe the thing was like 15 naira. I gave him 100 naira. I didn't even ask for change. I entered my house. And my parents were waiting for me in the parlor because they knew I went to check my result and print out whatever. I left them in parlor. I ran straight upstairs to my room, closed the door, bam, laid down there and started sobbing. Like, I was crying. I buried my head in the bed. I was crying my soul out. I said, so me, I'll stay one more, one more year at home. Like I said, now that I'm looking back, I'm just like, it's, see, if you're a kind of person that, oh, when you, if you're young now and you're watching this and maybe you finish school, you've not gotten admission, you've not gotten to the next stage that they expect you to get, don't be despaired, okay? Don't be angry. Don't, don't take it to heart, okay? Because God knows best, number one. And number two, there's no rush. In, eventually, you will catch up. You might even supersede your mates. All I'm saying is that you might even do better than you would have done if you had entered school immediately you were supposed to enter. Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't get admission immediately or whatever. Anyway, but this one I'm talking the story. At that time in my life, I was like, ah, my life is over. My life is over. I started one more year. My life is over. There's nothing else I can do again with myself. I'm basically going to be useless <laughs> at home. So, so I remember I was crying next to I think my father came and knocked on the door. I was like, what happened? I couldn't even talk. I was like, they did not give me admission. <laughs> my father said, eh? Hey, hey. My mom said, oh, Jesus. Not them that should not worry that they'll put me in private school because my other brother was already in a private university. He didn't have to go through all this jump, whatever, whatever. That should not worry that they'll put me in a private school. That should just clean my eyes. I should not, even if it's to go and look for money and put me in private school, that I must enter school that same year. I don't worry, this one, that one. My mother wasn't trying to encourage me. I was not hearing the encouragement because in my mind I was like, if I was going to enter private school, I would have entered the middle I finished um, secondary school. Why did I have to wait two years and then I eventually not enter the private school? So I wasn't hearing that one. I was in my mind, I was like, you're talking your whole story there. Me, I was sad. My dad said, don't worry, that he knows that me I passed. That there's no way that I will feel that I will not pass their interview. That, that he knows that I won't remember my father. My father's expectation of me, eh? hmm. you know my father sees me is like up up there. Okay, like, <laughs> I'll go into details later, shall boy. My father was like, there is no way his daughter did not pass that interview and she did not get admission. It's not possible. My father told me, don't worry. On Monday morning, I am taking you to UI University. This is not secondary school. This is not primary school. This is not where you go and do this thing. To UI, he told me, don't worry. On Monday morning, I am taking you to UI and we are going there to find out what happened. Okay, there is no way my daughter will not pass. Me, so I was not like, okay, so. <laughs> but my mom was like, what can you do? What, what will you go and if, if, they, if I go there and they now show you that I did not pass, what will you now do? Won't you carry shame and carry up again and be going home? You know, but somehow his confidence made me confident. So I was like, you know what, let's even go there on Monday. So I dried my eyes. I remember my mom cooks food for me that day. You know, they were shepherding me as per as per has broken child. <laughs> so that Saturday, that Sunday, uh, they were just, you know, treating me nicely. Then Monday morning, first thing, ah, we had our baths. My father, you know, took me. We left very early in the morning because we wanted to be there first thing. Like as they're opening their department, they will see us there. So I think we left like before 7 a.m. or something. We just, I feel my dad, we entered the bus. I remember then we sat down in front of the bus and, you know, throughout the journey, we were talking. He was just telling me how I should not worry that he will do whatever he can do and he knows I'm going to enter UI that year. So that was how we got to UI. Yo. Went to the HOD's department. I think we first went to the dean. No, not dean. We went to the HOD. They told us to go and see the HOD first. So we went to the HOD's department. We sat down, waited for the man. Went to our turn. He told us to come in. So when we came in, my father now explained to him everything that happened, that, you know, they say she was didn't get the admission, but he's very confident that his daughter, you know, passed this exam, I mean, passed the interview, you know. So the man said uh, that he remembers me, that was my name. I told him my name. He said that he remembers my name now, that I did with him, the one from Anambra State Abbey. I said yes. He said uh, that I did well. He now checked the list. I think my name was number four on the list or something. He now said, look at her name here now. Oh, she passed now. Hey! You guys, as I was seeing that thing, I was just like, what? Like, what? I'm gonna say, hey, that he knows. He said, talking man tomorrow, that man talks, yeah. That he knows. The man said, don't worry, that maybe it's an internet error or whatever. You know how this internet thing works, that I should not worry, that I should go and print out. I think he told me that he will call somebody in one place that I should go there and go and print out the thing that I'm supposed to print out and bring it back to the apartment and everything. I should not worry, everything. I don't my name is on the list now. So as we left him, my father said, you see, you see, I told you that you passed. I told you. You guys, I was so excited. We now went to the cyber cafe in the school, printed out the thing I was supposed to print out, you know. Funny enough, as we were in school, I think my mom went and told my neighbor. 
my mom went and told my neighbor about what happened. I think the neighbor has connection to you. I can't remember the story, but I know she told my neighbor what happened. My neighbor now said uh, uh, that there was a printout that morning. I think that Monday's newspaper, it's, they had the list of, I think this day, is it this day? Or Guardian, one of those newspapers. That they printed, they listed the names of um, students that got admission into UI that year. So they should, that, they should check, my name should be on the list. That was how they now checked and saw that my name was actually on the list on the newspaper okay they quickly removed the page and gave my mom you know my mom now called us and said ah that's your that seems on the list though this one was like ah yes yeah, so that we already found out that her name was on the list and everything so after we did all we had to do we now uh, entered bus and headed back home okay so you guys that was how my father came to fight for me here and i got admission and i entered ui and i studied english okay so you guys should not mind my english show it's just that i i don't speak for there but don't worry I, I i know english okay and i write well just i don't speak for there and i'm not interested anyway so i said all this to say that my father's actions actually gave me one kind of confidence like this eh? throughout my yeah my my university you know school even in secondary school said i never believed i could fail any course like i never believed i could fail any course and because of this because of the way that my father talks about my father talks so highly about me and sometimes i'm just like this is a little bit of pressure because one of my biggest fears in this life let me not call it it's not a fear but one of my biggest um things i try to avoid in this life is to disgrace my parents especially my dad one of my biggest drives in life is not to embarrass my parents <laughs> okay that's how serious it is and that's because of the way my father talks about me see you guys in my father's mind i am supposed to be a lecturer in a university i'm supposed to be a professor you know and all my job would just be to be lecturing students and all that and all that and i'll be receiving awards and stuff like that that's when my father sees me okay me i see myself blabbing on the internet <laughs> Okay, not really sure, but to be honest, that's when my father sees me. And even though I don't see myself in that light, I don't see myself becoming a lecturer, even though I've heard so many people telling me you do well there, I don't know why everybody else believes it about me except me, okay? I don't see myself becoming a lecturer. First of all, won't I like reading, first of all, before I become a lecturer? I'd be hard days to become a professor. will not you be a, 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 an advanced reader? I really don't like reading. Yeah, like I've said, I've told you guys before, I don't know what I want to be in this life, but I know that whatever I'm going to end up being, it's going to be something great okay so anyway that's the end of my story time all i was just trying to say is that fathers you have to be confident in your daughters you are the first example that your daughter has of a man let me say that again for the men at the back okay you are the first example that your daughter has of what a man should be like how a man should treat her what a man should think of her Somewhere in my mind, I believe that most of these women who confidently say men are scum, men are scum, is because they, have, they believe that their fathers are scum too. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that's how I see it. I see that a lot of women who confidently say men are scum is because their fathers were the first example of scum that they could do, they, they saw. So when men now come into their lives and are acting, you know, as badly as their fathers did, they now believe that all men are the same, okay? But people like us who had good examples of fathers, my father was not a perfect man. Funny enough, now that I'm even old, I'm just looking at back at something and I'm like, ah, that means my father was not that as perfect as I thought. Even though when I was growing up, to me, my father was, after God is my father. Like, that's how I was growing up. Like, after God, is my father is very, very close. Like, that was how it was for me. Okay? Now that I'm older, I see that my parents, my father, my parents basically were not perfect. Okay? But one thing I can say for my parents, and that's why when people come along and be saying, parents did this, parents do that, our parents, our parents... I still tell myself that, see, the reason why I will always give excuses for my parents is that I know that they did the best they could for the education, for the information, for the money they had, the exposure they had. They did the best they could at that time. My parents were not nonchalant parents. They were not parents who just went through life, you know, having kids for the sake of having kids, okay? My parents were very, very intentional and they did the best they could. My father did the best he could. My mother did, in fact, more than the best that she could for the, the resources that she had at that time, okay? So for me, that's my advice to even young people out there. If you know that your parents did the best they could for what they have, please excuse some of the mistakes they made. Just try and not repeat those same mistakes with your kids, okay? Just, but don't take it out on them. Don't be so uh, African parents, African parents up and down, African parents, this and that. Yes, I know that a lot, of, a lot of our parents did many wrong things. But trust me, 
when you become a parent, you are going to do so many wrong things. Do you want your kids to hold it against you? In your mind now, you are going to be the, the, the best parent in the whole world. You are going to be a perfect example to your parents and to your children. Trust me, in 30 years time, when your children come and tell you the mistakes you made, you will think back and say, ah, so I wasn't actually as perfect as I thought, okay? In fact, you don't even need them to point it out to you. Even me as a parent right now, something that I see myself doing to my kids, I'm just like, okay... This was not the plan, but it just came out of nowhere. And that's because we, are so many, we have so many demons, battles to fight, okay? We just need God's help, okay? So, anyway, before I ramble on too much, before I start, I turn this into a sermon, these two stories are one of the things in my mind that stand out when I think about my father and how he, you know, defended me as a child, even when do nothing to defend okay anyway let me know your thoughts in the comment section do you guys have fun stories about your fathers i'm talking about daughters now and women do you have fun stories about your fathers about how your fathers helped your confidence and all that okay if you have sad stories i'm sorry but yeah i want us to just give some some accolades to the good fathers in the house okay let's give some accolades to fathers who we are good and let us also you know, help our husbands, our brothers, our cousins, all the guys around us. Let, us. let us help them see how they can raise their daughters to prevent all the rubbish that we are seeing now with so many, you know, women and men in society, okay? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.